In this example, we have a plant controlled by a PAD controller. The control gains are 5, that's the proportional controller, 0 0.3 for the derivative controller, and 5 over tau, that represents the integral controller gain. We want to determine the maximum value of tau that will lead to a system with complex conjugate poles, dominant poles, that have a damping ratio of no less than 0 0.7. We are going to do that using the root locus analysis. And to do a root locus analysis, we need to now determine the characteristic equation of this closed loop system in the standard form for root locus. The characteristic equation here is simply 1 plus the multiplication of these two functions equals to 0. Unlike the previous exercises that we did on root locus, in this one, the characteristic equation that we get is not in a standard form for root locus analysis. That it needs to be written as 1 plus tau times g of s equals to 0, where g of s is a function of, of s, and tau is the variable that will change from 0 to infinity. Now you need to rearrange this expression in the standard form. We can start by finding a common denominator for the bottom part of the controller here. The common denominator would be s times tau. So you have 5s tau plus 0.3s squared tau plus 5 and times the plant transfer function equals to 0. Now we can find another common denominator between this term and 1. The common denominator would be tau s times the denominator of the plant transfer function. Now the denominator times 1 is the denominator itself, plus the top of the equation here, 5s tau plus 0.3 s squared tau plus 5, and this is equal to 0. Now we can multiply the denominator by 0, that's 0, so the denominator goes away, and you can now work with the top of this expression only. Let's just start by factoring all terms that have tau. The first term here has tau, 0.11s to the power of 3. This corresponds to this term times s. The second term becomes 0.11s squared plus 0.1s plus 5s and plus 0.3s squared. These are all the elements with s, with tau, and plus 5, the element without tau. Now we are approaching the standard form. The standard form requires 1 plus tau times g of s. Here we have 5. So if we divide now the entire transfer function by 5, both sides, we can have 5 over 5, that is 1 plus tau times 0.11 s3 plus now adding the factors. Now we can add 0 0.11 and 0 0.3 that is 0.41 s squared plus 5.1 s equals to 0. This is now the standard form of the characteristic equation for root locus analysis. 1 plus a variable times a function of s. From the characteristic equation in the standard root locus form, we find three zeros. Those are s equals to 0 and s equals to negative 20.9 plus minus 9.5i, or j. And we find no poles, m equals to 0, m minus n equals to negative 3. We have an excess of three zeros. When you have three more poles or three more zeros, you have three asymptotes, and in this case, the angles of those asymptotes will be theta 1 equals to negative 60 degrees, theta 2, negative 100 or 100 degrees, and theta 3, 60 degrees, using the very same formula you used before to calculate the angle of the asymptotes. We can determine the centroid of these asymptotes, sum of all poles, that is 0, minus sum of all zeros, so real parts are negative 20.9, negative 20.9, divided by negative 3, and this is negative 
Now we can look for breakaway and breaking points, if any. To do that, we set tau to p of s. And this will give negative 5 over 0.11s to the power of 3 plus 0.41s squared plus 5.1s. We now find the derivative of p of s, dp of s ds and set that to zero. The values that satisfy this expression are now potential breakaway or breaking points. I'm going to skip that derivation and just look, give the solutions of this part of the equation. Those are negative 9.5 and negative 17.7. These are the potential breakaway or breaking points. At this point, we don't know if they belong to the root locus. Let's keep them here and then check later whether or not they are part of the root locus. Now that we have gathered all this information about the transfer function, we can proceed with the root locus. Let's start by locating the zeros. We have one zero at zero, and we have one zero at negative 20.9, and 9.5 and one with the same real part, but now with a negative imaginary part. We have a centroid of asymptotes at, where did I go here? Negative 13.5, 13.7. And we have two potential breakaway or breaking points. And three asymptotes, one going up at an angle of 60 degrees, one going down at an angle of negative 60 degrees, and one going to negative infinity with an angle of 180 degrees. Now let's look at the breakaway and breaking points. Are these indeed breakaway or breaking points? First, to answer that question, we need to determine where the root locus is. The root locus is to the left of a not number of real poles and zeros which in this case means that the root locus occupies the entire negative real axis. If that is the case, then yes, these two values here are indeed breakaway or breaking points. So let's write them down. One is negative 17.7, and the other one is negative 9.5. Now we have everything you need to complete the root locus. We have three zeros and no poles, so these zeros must be coming from infinity. When you had an excess of poles, the, these poles would go to infinity. Now we have zeros, so zeros come from infinity. The entire negative real axis is occupied. We have an asymptote of negative 180 degrees. And we have a breakaway and breaking points, two of them, to be determined. If we have an asymptote of 180 degrees and the negative real axis is occupied, this entire portion of the real axis is taken. There is a root locus there. And it could end up going to that zero. We have now two asymptotes that will bring poles from infinity. If they bring poles from, from infinity, these poles will have to come and break in at negative 9.5. So this is the break-in point. One pole, one of the zeros comes from infinity, breaks in at 9.5. The other one comes from negative infinity, also breaks in at 9.5. They could now very well travel on the real axis and go to their respective zeros. To do that, now they have to break away at negative 17.7. So one of the poles goes to that zero, and the other one goes to that zero. Which pole goes where? It's hard to tell. But this one here clearly comes from infinity. One could go from to the zero, or it could just go to that zero. But let's assume, for instance, that it comes from infinity breaks away here, goes to that zero. If that is the case, then this pole or that pole will break in here and go to that zero, one of them, and the other one 
now needs to come here so it would travel all the way and come down here we can check that with matlab looking at the root locus like this is difficult to say which one goes where but it doesn't really matter because this now represents the root locus of the closed loop system that's all what we need even though now these are zeros these are zeros of this transfer function these are poles of the closed loop transfer function remember that these are zeros because we ended up with this particular expression but these zeros simply represent the endpoints of the location of poles of the closed loop transfer function as k goes from zero to infinity or in this case tau okay so this is now the root locus but we are not done the question is what is the location what is the value of s the location of the poles that we have a damping ratio of 0 0.7 where is the pole what is the value of tau let's start by locating the poles on this root locus the complex dominant poles as the problem states that i have a damping ratio of 0 0.7 a damping ratio of 0 0.7 implies that we have a pole that it will line on a line that will form an angle of theta with the imaginary axis. And theta is sine minus 1 of the damping ratio, 0 0.7. So this is 45 degrees. This line has 45 degrees. Any point along this line any pole along this line has a damping ratio of 0 0.7 so where is the pole the complex dominant pole that it has a damping ratio of 0 0.7 well it needs to be a feasible point and the only feasible point is here is that the intersection of the root locus and the line of constant damping ratio now our job to in towards finding tau that will take us there is to find the location of that pole well, let's start by creating a zoomed in version of this root locus. This is the real and this is the imaginary axis. We have this line of constant damping ratios starting from here with an angle of 45 degrees. And we have the intersection of that line with a asymptote at 60 degrees. So let's write the asymptote here. The asymptote starts at alpha, negative 13.7, and intersects the line of constant damping ratios at that point. That is the location of the pole we need. This is, of course, a approximation. If you look at this point here, around this part of the root locus, the asymptote and the actual root locus are not necessarily the same. But as the poles now become tangent to the asymptote, we can assume that at those locations, the poles are along the asymptotes. Hence, here, it's enough to specify the asymptote and assume that this pole now intersects the asymptote and the root locus because there, they are very close together. The angle of this asymptote is 60 degrees. So here we have 45 on the other side here we must have 45 as well which means that this angle here needs to be 75 degrees so everything adds up to 180 degrees now let's find that point to find that point we can use the sign rule let's call let's call this distance here y the height and let's call the distance on the x the uh, real axis x because we have an angle of 45 degrees, x and y are the same. We can now use the rule of sines to solve that. The rule of sines, as a quick reminder, we have a triangle like this. This angle is A, and this side of the triangle is lowercase a. Here we have B and B. We can say that sine B over small b equals to sine capital A over A, which is equal to sine of c over c we are looking for y so we could try to find this distance first 
between the point and the center of the imaginary axis. We know that this is omega n. This is the natural frequency of that pole. Now we can write that a sine of 60 over omega n equals to sine of which angle we take. Well, we know this distance, so let's take that angle, sine of 75 divided by 13.7, this distance here. And now so for omega n, which gives 12.2 radians per second. So this distance is 12.2. Now using simple trigonometry, we can find y s 12.2 sine of 45 degrees. And x is 12.2 cosine of 45 degrees. This is 8.7. And x is cosine of 45, which is also 8.7. Of course, we have 45 degrees. Now, where is the pole? Now, the pole is simply this coordinate. That coordinate is s equals to negative 8.7, the real part, plus minus 8.7j. This is now the only feasible location on the root locus where the complex dominant poles have a damping ratio of 0.7 as specified.